We are in the midst of massive transformation from a worker perspective. If you look at the impact of automation, of robotics, of artificial intelligence, of machine learning, they are today having an impact on people's jobs. So we've tried in the Workforce of the Future study to position four alternative options of what work might look like. These four worlds are different in terms of whether they be collective or individual. They're different in terms of the types of businesses, whether you've got a very fragmented supply chain or whether you're a very integrated large business. In the blue world, corporate is king. There's a huge divide between the winners and losers. It's big capitalism on steroids. There will be a core group of individuals that work at the blue world and then you're going to have what we would call a contingent workforce. So the blue world will buy in skills as and when they need them. Large parts of existing jobs will either be um, replaced or augmented by technology. They will be monitored and measured and managed very, very closely. Talent will be identified very early uh, and brought through the organisation. The red world is all about speed and innovation. It's about getting like-minded people together. It's about bringing new ideas and new businesses to the market quickly. There's a need for nimble, adaptive talent that will go in and work on new products and be comfortable with pivoting onto the next opportunity. The red world is about things being developed and launched very quickly. Technology will obviously help to do that by connecting people wherever they are in the world to make sure that the best ideas and the best brains can be used whenever they need to be used. The prime focus in a green world is all about society and corporate responsibility. Workforces are attracted to that organisation because they believe in its mission. The technology that's used in the green world is used in a way to make sure that there's minimal impact on the environment and those around them and that technology is used to enhance the scarce resources that those organisations have. In the yellow world, humans come first and humanness is hugely valued. These are small organisations, they are thinking about social responsibility and fairness but it's small and it, it comes back to the, um, the artisans, the, the makers, the guild economy, um, a set of professional like-minded people coming together um, to execute their craft. They won't be strongly affiliated with a particular employer. They won't be tied into nine to five. They won't be tied into five days a week. Technology in the yellow world really enables people with ideas or aspirations or somebody that wants to start their own business, it enables them to come in to that world at a much lower barrier to entry. If anyone tells you they know how this is going to play out over a five or ten year horizon, then I wouldn't believe them. No one should be trying to have a fixed plan beyond about six months. If the world of work does become more green, or if it becomes much more red, how does my business today react? For existing workers, the, the key is flexibility and adaptability. So people need to think of themselves not as the job that they do, but the bundle of skills that they have. People need to think much more about lifelong learning. How do they stop and start and, and retrain at different points of their life? to be able to contribute in different ways. The reality is the future's here today, and organisations need to start thinking about what that future looks like for them. Machine learning in particular, and artificial intelligence, um, will help us do a much better job of workforce planning in the future. You can't sit back and wait for the future of work to happen. You have to plan for it today.